Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now today we've got a really exciting video for you. This is another company in the small cap MJ space here in Canada. The company name is Medifarm Labs, and it actually competes directly with Neptune and the Valens company, which as you know, is my current biggest position in all my accounts combined. So I'm really excited to walk you guys through their business model. They've got earnings coming out for Q1 of 2021 on Monday next week. So it's very timely that we're going through this right now. And honestly, the entire market has been absolutely insane this week, specifically for small caps here in Canada in this sector. So I'm really excited to walk through this, you guys. There's definitely some great deals to be had. As always, before we get into the video, please take a second to smash that like button. It really does help the channel out and it helps get this content to other people like yourself who may find value. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, McNally Money. We just crossed that thousand subscriber milestone, so we are monetized now. I could not be more excited about that. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for your support. And on a final note, make sure you leave a comment in the section below on what you think of Medifarm Labs how you think it stacks up to some of these other companies in this space, and if you currently hold shares. Now, without further ado, let's roll the intro clip and get into today's video. Okay, guys, so that's right. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Medifarm Labs. Now this is an operator in the Canadian MJ space. They're really focused on extraction and they're getting into a lot of international agreements and the medical side of things. So CBD extracts and exporting that to different countries across the world, which we're gonna talk about. Now Metafarms Labs has a very interesting history with me personally, which I'm gonna to talk to you about in a second here. The ticker symbol is Labs, L-A-B-S, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And it currently has a market cap you can see here of about 112 million. So it definitely is a little bit smaller if you compare it to some of the other extractors like a Valens or a Neptune. And we're going to actually look at a chart that compares the two in a second here. So if we pull out to a six month on Medifarm Labs itself, you can see they were up north of 90 cents in February there when we saw that strength in the sector overall. And since then, they've dropped off considerably. They're now really touching all-time lows. And if we zoom out to a one year, you can see that they've been on a steady decline all the way from the above $2 kind of range in May. If you look out a little bit further, you can see that this company was once above $5 and they're now under 50 cents. So they've definitely struggled over the last couple of years. We're gonna talk through their business model. I'm gonna give you guys some of my thoughts on why this share price has taken a dive like this so dramatically. And then we're going to look at my actual projection for this company and some potential entry points moving forward. Now, in addition to that, this company is going to be reporting earnings next week. So that's exciting. Again, very timely. And we are now really getting close on the channel to talking about the majority of these small cap MJ plays here in Canada. And what's nice about that is now that we've laid the groundwork, I've given a deep dive on, again, the majority of these companies. We can now start to follow them as news comes out and as quarterly earnings come out and start to see which one of these ones pulls out as the leader in each of their respective divisions. So I'm really excited about that and I'm really proud of where this channel's come. Now we're going to jump into the analysis right now. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys is actually in regards to the comparison to Valence. So what I've done here is pull up a full screen chart on both companies. So you can see Labs is the dark blue line here. Valens is the baby blue line and what was interesting here is I actually a few years ago held labs and at one point in time labs was quite a bit more expensive in terms of share price than Valens. As we saw they were over five dollars. Valens really hasn't gone much past that three dollar mark until recently here. Now if you pull out to a two-year chart here you can see for the last half of 2019 really all the way up until the start of 2020 Labs was quite a bit more expensive in terms of share price than Valens. So there was actually a point in time where Labs hit $7 plus. I remember that day specifically, and I remember having my money in Valens and thinking, oh my God, I've picked the wrong extraction play here. Now I did bounce some money around back and forth. I ended up selling out of Labs just before this big spike. I'm okay with that because if you look at the recent trending on this, there was kind of a reversal right at the start of 2020 here. And since then, Medifarm's lab has been continually downtrending. 
while Valens has been continually uptrending. Now if we look at the past year, you can see the divergence has really become quite evident here with Valens now pushing up close to the $4 range with Medifarm down in the 40 cent range. So Valens is about 10 times, nine times, 10 times the share price of Medifarm's labs at this point in time. And in terms of market cap, Valens is now pushing about 600 million versus Medifarm here in the 100 million range. So I definitely thought that comparison was interesting, especially with my history with these companies. And I wanted to point that out for you guys. So moving along, here's the article talking about Medifarm's labs release date for Q1 of 2021. Now this is going to be the three months leading up to March 31st, and they're going to be releasing this on the morning of May 17th. So next week, Monday morning, they're going to be releasing earnings and doing their conference calls. So this is definitely going to be one to watch and listen in if you're looking at Medifarm's lab or if you currently hold shares in this company. Now the other piece of news I was able to dig up here that I thought was definitely noteworthy is this article talking about their global portfolio and their expansion into nine countries internationally now. So this came out on April 26, obviously very recently here, and they talk about this new distribution agreement with Malta, and they also talk about during the quarter being able to distribute to three different countries, including Germany, Peru, and Australia. They've also expanded their distribution footprint here in Canada, and Medifarms Labs expects to begin exporting to other countries this year, including Brazil, Malta, which this article talks about, Denmark, and New Zealand. So this is one way this company definitely has differentiated itself from a lot of the other MJ plays here in Canada, including Valens. A lot of companies are really looking for that international expansion, especially in the United States, but they don't really have the scale and scope that Medifarms Labs has currently in place. So this company of any that I've seen in terms of small caps is working with the most countries internationally at this point in time. Now interestingly enough, they do call out the United States here, but they don't have a distinct plan to enter that market. So it's interesting to me that they're going all over the world to some of these smaller countries when they have this huge audience or customer base just south of the border here. So that's one thing to be aware of, but definitely props to this company for setting up these agreements. We're gonna talk about some of their certification, their facilities, and the Germany partnership specifically towards the end of the video, but definitely an interesting component of this company. So moving along here, now we're gonna start talking about what Medifarms Labs actually does. So you can see they call out a couple of their different verticals here, product development and formulation, production at scale, global quality assurance, so again that's that international focus, packaging, distribution and sales, and then GMP certification and global pathway. So we're going to look at these two certifications that they currently have in a second, but again that's the good manufacturing process, and that's one that we've seen come up in a number of these reviews that I've done on the channel. Now if we scroll down here, you can see how this company describes themselves. So Medifarm Labs has invested in an expert research driven team state-of-the-art technology, downstream purification methodologies, and purpose-built facilities with five primary extraction lines for delivery of pure, trusted, and precision-dosed MJ, API, and derivative products for its patients and customers through its wholesale and white label platforms. So that's really where their business is focused and we're gonna look at how that shift has changed over the years. They formulate, consumer test, process, package, and distribute MJ extracts and advanced MJ based products to domestic and international markets. As a global leader, so again that global or international scope, Medifarm Labs has completed commercial exports to Australia and is nearing commercialization of its Australian extraction facility. Medifarm Labs Australia was established in 2017. So we're going to look at their operations. You can see here it's pretty small. We're going to look at a bigger view of this. But they've got two hubs right now, one in Canada and one in Australia. Now one thing I'll call out here if we scroll back up, this MJ API, I'm not familiar with this term, so I looked it up here, and this is Active Pharmaceutical Ingredient. So this company, another way they've differentiated themselves is really focusing on the medical or the pharmaceutical application of MJ. So you're going to see that come up through the presentation as well. But this particular term, API, I haven't seen in a lot of other presentations, so I wanted to call that out for you guys specifically. So I felt like this slide was definitely worth including. This kind of shows 
the progression of this company over the past six or seven years here. So you can see starting in 2015, they were founded. They were the first to obtain Health Canada extraction only license. So that's definitely a huge kudos to this company. They built capabilities in terms of research and development, pharma and scientific teams. They created the first purpose-built GMP manufacturing facility. They launched their first offering, which was actually bulk wholesale, and they raised $30 million in capital during that three-year period. Now in 2019, they moved into the phase they call implementation. So this is when they really started signing a lot of these bulk supply agreements or bulk clients. They then received their GMP certification in Canada here for this purpose-built facility. They completed the first purpose-built GMP manufacturing facility in Australia, so emulated what they did here in Canada, down under. They expanded their licenses in Canada and Australia. They launched their white label and contract manufacturing offerings, and we're going to look at that specifically in a few slides here, and then again raised an additional $75 million of capital. Now as we move into 2020, this is what they're coining as the execution phase. So they now achieved that GMP certification for the Australian facility. So both are now fully GMP certified, which we're gonna see in a second. They reached a huge milestone of 30 plus supply agreements across the European Union, Latin America, and the Asia Pacific region. So again, very well spread out and diversified across the globe here. They gained position to start servicing large pharma and consumer packaged goods companies and we're going to look at that Germany agreement specifically towards the end of the video here. They launched their Medifarm Labs branded products for medical and recreational use so I think this was a key for this company is to start launching some of their own in-house branded products so we're going to look at that one specifically as well and they signed a major European supply deal here as well. Now into 2021 and on they're coining this as the expansion phase so they mentioned this STADA agreement that's the Germany one that we're going to focus on, so I'm not going to go into that right now. They've got geographic expansion and potential U.S. legalization, so they again call out the U.S., but I'd like to see some firm plans of entering this market. They expand their product range, clinical trials and potential development of medical-related products, targeting strong profitable growth, so we're going to actually look at their earnings and revenue forecast over the next couple of years at the very end here, but they are trending towards profitability within the next three years. And then of course, they're gonna focus on finding and signing new pharmaceutical partnerships and agreements. So this slide very quick talks about their two GMP certifications here in Canada and in Australia. Now they are working on their EU GMP certification as well. They're actually in progress in Germany on this. And Germany has the most stringent or most difficult, I guess, requirements to get this certification. So if they're able to get this in Germany, they should be covered. And that's really gonna op open up a lot of potential in the EU overall for Medifarms Labs. Now this is a blown up view of their operations. So we saw this image a couple slides ago, but this one's much bigger, so I wanted to talk about this. So again, there's two bases of operation right now, which they call their Canada HQ and their Australia HQ. And in addition to Canada and Australia, you can see a number of other countries flagged on this map where they have agreements or prospective agreements to start exporting their products to. Now in terms of the Canadian HQ, it's located in Barrie, Ontario. It's a 70,000 square foot purpose-built facility. It's got the GMP certification. It's allowed to do global export and distribution of products. That's what that GMP certification allows them to do. And of course, the EU GMP is still pending. Now in Australia, this is located in Victoria. It's a 10,000 square foot facility, so about a seventh of the one in Canada here. So quite a bit smaller, but still a fair-sized operation. They've got their GMP certification as well. And this hub is really meant to service the Asia Pacific region, and then obviously New Zealand down here. So again, it's really interesting. A lot of companies are focused on Canada and Australia. And I think this really serves Metafarms Labs well as it gives them a localized hub or center to service all corners of the globe here. So moving along, we're now gonna look at the actual products and services that this company offers. So they've got a number, they've divided them into three different categories here. So product development, contract manufacturing, and then R&D. Under product development, they list global manufacturing and regulatory expertise. 
They've got a testing division and expert sourcing. So again, they've been around the block here. They understand how to get into different countries, how to break into new markets, and how to ensure the product quality meets all of the standards that are required to do so. In the middle is contract manufacturing. Now this is really where this company has focused and we're gonna see a lot of the different products in this category in a second here. So they've got a focus on active pharmaceutical ingredient products, finished formulated products, distribution and tech transfer. So actually transferring some of the knowledge and information to third party companies. And then under the research and development, They've got a Health Canada research license, which is obviously of tremendous value. Their go-to source in terms of how to use MJ as an active pharmaceutical ingredient. And then they've also got intellectual property development through clinical trials here in Canada. So they're really pushing the bounds in terms of what MJ can be used for and different applications across different types of industry. So if we jump back to their website here and you go under products and services, you can see the different areas that they call out. So white label, bulk wholesale, their Medifarm brand itself, Labs MJ and Wayfair. Now I wanted to spend some time on the white label production and the contract manufacturing because this is really where the company's future is and this is where they want to shift the majority of their sales and revenue mix. So if you scroll down here you can see all the different things that this company actually offers to third party companies whether they're licensed producers or they just want white label products that they can stick their brands on. So if you scroll down, you can see they have a number of different offerings, including the actual extraction and distillation itself, formulation, sensory testing, processing, packaging and labeling, distribution under their own license with government distributors and private retailers, and export opportunities where permitted. So it really is a full suite of services that Medifarms Labs offers. And in terms of the actual products that they can create, they've got formulated oils, soft gel capsules, vapes, edibles, topicals, which include creams and gels, and MJ-based medicines. So very wide product offering, very wide suite of services, and very wide footprint in terms of their global or international presence. So that's definitely one thing I do like about this company is they've got a lot of different avenues available to them. However, over the last couple of years, I don't feel like they've really maximized that potential. And that's why we've seen that share price continue to downtrend year after year. Now this slide really lays out how this company wants to shift their sales mix over the next five years. So you can see in 2019, they were predominantly bulk wholesale. Almost all of their revenue or sales came from that whereas contract manufacturing made up only a fraction of their activity. Now in 2020, contract manufacturing made up just over a quarter of total business operation, and by 2025, they hope to flip that on its head with bulk wholesale making up about 25% and contract manufacturing making up just about three quarters or 75% of total sales. And that's why I wanted to spend some time on that contract manufacturing and the different products that they offer because that's really where this company sees their future. And I think that's a very smart move. Obviously the margins in the bulk wholesale side of things are gonna be challenged over the next couple of years. And I highly think once the US legalizes on a federal scale, it's gonna be very difficult to make money in the bulk wholesale side of this industry. So this was encouraging for me to see. Now the question is if they can actually do this and execute on their plan. So continuing on with that point, Here's a slide showing their current client partnerships. Now, probably the most notable on here would be Kronos and Compass, in my personal opinion. There's a number of others listed, which you may or may not be familiar with, but it definitely speaks to their ability to forge these partnerships and deal with a variety of companies in a variety of countries. So here you can even see some Australian MJ companies listed as well. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time on the Medifarm branded products themselves, but I did want to throw it in the presentation here. You can see that these launched in 2019. They're really focused on the CBD side of things at this point in time. They don't represent a huge portion of this company's revenue, but I did want to throw it in because it is important to note that this company does have their own branded stuff in-house, and this is an avenue of revenue for this company moving forward if they really choose to pursue it. Now, in addition to the Medifarm Labs branded products, they also have Wayfair, which is a line of vapes and vape cartridges. So I would definitely encourage you to take a look at that as well if you're interested in this company. Now, where I did wanna spend a little bit more time is actually on this Pharmacana opportunity as they coin it. 
So this is really the relationship between the MJ industry and the traditional healthcare or pharmaceutical industry. And Medifarm Labs has called out a number of sizable and notable partnerships over the last few years. And they really feel like this is a huge opportunity for them. So you can see listed here is the Medifarm Labs STADA or STATA agreement. We're going to look at that one in detail. That's the Germany partnership. This was formed in October of 2020. And Medifarm entered a first of its kind partnership with STATA, a European leader in generic, pharmaceuticals, consumer healthcare, and specialty products. Now some of the other ones they call out on here are with other companies in the MJ and pharmaceutical space. So Jazz, Pharmaceuticals, Perigo, and the most notable for me was this Novartis agreement with Tilray, which is obviously one of the biggest and most well-known MJ brands in the entire world at this point in time. So this is definitely interesting and something I haven't seen a lot of these small caps really pursuing in a meaningful way, but Medifarm really feels like this partnership and the medical side of the market has huge opportunity and potential for them and they're really pursuing this aggressively, which we're gonna see on the next slide. So here's some more details on this Stata Medifarm Labs agreement. This company has 125 years of history. It's based in Germany, so that's obviously why they're doing their EU GMP certification in Germany itself. They've got a presence in 120 countries internationally, and their revenue in 2019 was north of 2.6 billion euros. So it's a massive, massive company, and it opens a lot of doors for Medifarm Labs moving forward. So this is really where they've put a lot of their eggs and this is where they feel like the growth of this company is really gonna live for Labs itself. And this slide gives some additional context as to where that growth is gonna come from. So you can see in Germany, only one in 10 pharmacies actually provide MJ products. So there's obviously huge growth potential there. The expected size of the German medical MJ market is expected to be almost seven and a half billion euros by 2028. And they saw 40% growth in the first half of 2020 compared to the first half of 2019. So the growth trajectory is definitely ramping up and Medifarm really feels like if they can establish a good foothold in Germany, that's going to serve as an entryway or a gateway to the rest of Europe. So again, very different approach than some of the other companies we've looked at and time will tell which strategy ultimately prevails overall. Now to wrap things up here, you guys, I wanted to jump over to Simply Wall Street. This platform has a ton of great information. Now it does not give a price prediction for this company because it's a little small and they don't have a ton of information on it, but I wanted to call out a few specific things. So on the bullish side of things, earnings are expected to grow by over 100% per year. We're gonna look at that in a second. On the bearish side of things, they call out the company's cash runway, so small cash position substantial shareholder dilution over the past year. This is something a lot of my viewers have really expressed frustration with, with a number of these companies that we talk about, is they continue to raise money and they continue to dilute shareholders in the process. So that's one thing to be aware of here. And they also call out the market cap on this company. And as we all know, the smaller the size of the company, generally the more risky it is. So those are a couple things to be aware of. Again, some bullish, some bearish. So you make up your mind for yourself. If we continue to scroll through this website, you can see here they do give projection on future growth. So this is actually their revenue and earnings growth. You can see they're expected to hit profitability somewhere between 2022 and 2023, with 2023 year-end revenue expected to be around $150 million and earnings to come in at around $13.5 million. So if you're going to invest in this company, just be aware that you might be in it for the long run here and they're not expected to be profitable for quite some time. Now that being said, this may be the perfect opportunity to get in because the share price has been beaten up so badly and you just lock this one away and give it some time. But it is one thing to be aware of for sure. And the final point I wanted to bring up here, you can see there's a tremendous amount of value on Simply Wall Street. This one talks about the insider trading volume. So this is definitely a bullish indicator for me. Nobody has sold shares over the past 12 months, at least any insiders. And they've actually bought over half a million shares in the last three months and about two and a half million shares in the last six to nine months. Now, if you scroll down, you can actually see the insider buys. So this is obviously the executive leadership team, the CEO, a lot of the big wigs at this company but you can see the max price or the price they paid for these shares 
was in the 85 to 58 cent range. So they were actually buying this company at a higher rate than you can get it now. So the way I look at that is if you're interested in labs, you can actually get shares cheaper than some of the executive team did in the last couple of months here. So that's definitely interesting and one thing I wanted to show you guys. So to wrap things up, you guys, I'm definitely glad we took a closer look at Medifarm Labs. As mentioned, I have a history with this company. I've been an owner in the past and I no longer have a position, but I wanted to take another look at it. I definitely think they have two main things going for them. Number one is this pharmaceutical or medical focus. And secondly, is their international and global expansion or reach. Now, those are definitely different than some of the other objectives or focuses that we've talked about with some of these other companies. And time will tell which one of these strategies really makes more sense. To me, I am happy having my money in balance. I think their approach here in North America makes sense. And I think it's a little bit less risky than the Medifarm Labs business model or business plan over the next couple of years. But again, we'll wait and see. It's going to be definitely interesting to watch this company's earnings come out next Monday. So I would highly encourage you to take a look at that or listen in if possible, because this might be a great time to pick up some shares of Labs at all time lows in terms of their share price. Now, as always, you guys, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Let me know what you think of Labs overall, this analysis, and if you hold any shares of this company. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please make sure you do so. Smash that like button. It really does help get this content to other people like yourself who might find value. And on a final note, make sure you have a great rest of your day, and thanks so much for watching.